I think 1974's The Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a higher achievement in art than it's often given credit for. It opens with a beautiful shot of two newly unearthed and congealing corpses that have been wired together into a monument of death and erosion sitting on top of a gravestone. This is how the film says hello, and to my mind, this is the movie's mission statement. You're about to see an hour and a half of art that's been fashioned together out of rot and decay that's been hiding just under the surface. Anger and hate unyieldingly permeate the entirety of this film. It sticks with you. It also stuck with Ridley Scott, as he said this movie was more influential in making Alien than any B-sci-fi movie was. So, I guess that's one part Texas Chainsaw Massacre, one part Planet of the Vampires. Let's look at this shot for a minute. This is probably the slickest shot in the movie, but I think it's for the best, because a lot of the camera work's strength here is how dispassionately observational it is. However, this shot doesn't do much to damage that, and it's really cool. The house gets bigger and bigger, until it's large enough to swallow the Pam character whole. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre is aesthetically dense with detail, and seldom, if ever, will you see a shot in this movie that isn't rich with texture. The set dressing in the house is full of feathers, hanging pelts, discarded teeth, and one particularly gloomy Ed Gein-inspired sculpture made of what I'm assuming are practical cattle bones and fake human bones. Actually, on a side note, I know the art director, who did a staggeringly fantastic job, would go to farms to collect the bodies of dead cattle and use on this production, so I think nearly all of the animal bones shown in this movie are real. One of the things in this movie that I think is particularly beautiful is the red wall with the animal heads mounted on it. It's this wonderfully sharp and comparatively vivid color, standing out from all the grays and browns we've seen up until this point. The movie has done just about everything it can to let us know that the entire area is extremely unfriendly, and I've subsequently always looked at this red wall as the symbolic heart of this seething and angry setting that the movie shows us. And it's fitting that from that room we get one of the best killer reveals in horror movie history, in the middle of the day. It's abrupt and genuinely shocking. The camera isn't interested in focusing on the blood. That just seems to be incidental, which only makes it feel more real. The body is pulled into the room, and this impenetrable metal door is slid shut with a bang. It's brilliant, because we immediately switch point of views, and not only are we wondering what's happening to the guy behind the metal door, but the suspense heightens dramatically because we've seen the monster that's lurking in the heart of this house. When he emerges again from the metal door, it feels doubly tragic that the Pam character manages to make it just outside the house before she's grabbed and pulled back in. She's quickly hung by a meat hook with nothing to do but suffer, and watch as her boyfriend is cut into with a chainsaw. The violence in this whole discovering the house scene is so quick and instinctive that it feels extraordinarily authentic. Even Leatherface's mask doesn't look costume designed. Instead, it genuinely looks like skin that's been turned into a mask with unskilled thread and wire. Speaking of authenticity, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre was completely shot on locations, which, in instances like the inside of the world's worst gas station and barbecue, makes it very difficult to discern what was set dressing and what just happened to be there. The rust and grime that covers everything isn't just its own character. It punctuates and amplifies that inconsolable hate that runs through the entire movie. One of the things in the film that helps to maintain that feeling of unpredictability is how unstable the family is. The movie gives us a good look at the father's cruel nature in the car. When he says calming things to the Sally character while masochistically poking and hitting her, and once the family is all together in one place, we see that, despite having a shared goal, they're hateful towards even each other. In this movie, the antagonists aren't especially unified. They're consistently at each other's throats. The bickering and then the weird childlike howling makes the dinner table, which is usually a more civilized place in a house, feel like the most chaotic and irrational. Also, I don't think it's an obscure fact, but, but it's always worth mentioning that the effect wasn't working right, so the scene where they cut the Sally character's finger and then give it to the grandpa to suck the blood from, they really did actually cut her finger. Anyway, I've rarely, if ever, have seen a scene in a film that captures frenzied horror like the dinner scene does. It's a spectacular crescendo in a movie that feels genuinely assaulting. This movie corners you constantly, and in its short runtime, has so many things to show you in the moment to moment that force you to react, and forcing you to react is what all great art does. It is sincerely mean-spirited and genuinely penetrating. Although I've seen plenty of movies that are much more extreme in their violence, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre remains one of the most beautifully repugnant and visceral films I have ever seen. 
if you've seen it, then you already know what your reaction to it was. I've seen a lot of people who love it and a lot of people who hate it, but very few who are indifferent towards it. The reaction is seldomly anything but severe. Thank you so much for watching. Thumbs up if you liked the video, thumbs down if you didn't. Subscribe for more horror movie content, and until next time.